Welcome to the Steady On Stronger Together podcast. I am your host, Angie Ballman. I recently sat down with my Flourish Writers friend, Jennifer Bryant Chung. Jennifer has a new book called Signs from God, Discovering Messages in Everyday Life for Healing, Direction, and Transformation. Through it, Jennifer hopes to guide her reader into a deeper understanding of how God is presenting himself in their normal, even routine experiences. Whether you're someone that struggles to see God in the everyday or you see God in all kinds of things, I know that listening to Jennifer will be encouraging to you. Let's listen in. Hello, Steady On community, and welcome to this Stronger Together conversation. My guest today is Jennifer Bryant Chung. <laughs> Jennifer has written this book. Jennifer is one of my Flourish Writer friends. And Jennifer, I'm just so glad that you're here today. Thanks for joining us for this chat. You're Jennifer's welcome. book so is, to I, it's so great to talk to you, is Signs from God. And how long has it been out, Jennifer? Well, the ebook came out. It was like my test project. Can I actually publish? Um, the ebook came out mid November of 2020. Um, and beginning of December is when the paperback came out. So um, it hasn't been out that long. It's still yeah. brand spanking new. Yeah. And give us yeah. just, yeah, the, the subtitle is um, Discovering God's Messages in Your Everyday Life for Healing, Direction, and transformation. And so it really does talk about uh, the way that God kind of shows up right in our life and how we can better recognize those things. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny as I was writing the book, cause you're never really sure what you should title it usually until you're done writing. <laughs> um, so the working title I was working with was hope breaks through. Mm. Um, and the emphasis as I was writing, which turned into signs from God, uh, really is that in each moment, like Psalms 119 verses 17 and 18 says, you know, like his thoughts to us outnumber the grains of the sand, like if we could count them. And if God is thinking that much of me and you, like I want to catch as many of those thoughts, as many of those moments as I can. What is God saying to me? What is he communicating with me? What is really in his heart that he so wants me to know. And so that's, of course, been a lifelong journey at 47. I'm, I'm still learning awesome, amazing, crazy things about God. But the fact that he gives us these standstill moments of his presence and his thoughts to us, these are the places where we find healing. These are the places we get our direction from God. These are the places where we are transformed from what we are, were um, and we're being transformed deeper into what he always destined us to be. Mm, yeah. It's the, yeah, it's the things that spur on the transformation, right? Yeah. yeah. The way that we grow in him. Good. That's good stuff already. And Go ahead. If I could add one more thing, I yes. would just say um, there's, there's this mystery that I like to just knock off from the start and say that um, it, it God uses yet yeah, things that will surprise us and really grab our attention, things that we weren't expecting, but also really mundane, normal things that we all have on our, in our life. And I think that's key. Like mm -hmm. if we're looking for showstopper, jaw dropping moments we will have them because he's god like he mm -hmm. is out of the box but this outnumbers the grains of the sand thoughts towards us continually streaming it's in everything around us yeah it's, you, you got things in your life yeah i'm guaranteed yeah i can make that guarantee because yeah. that's our god yeah, that's right that's right yeah <laughs> breaking and the mystification off it <laughs> i know and how the way that he appears is so personal i think um yeah and so it's just i think the biggest thing is not asking the question, is he speaking to me? Is he showing up in my life? But the question really is, how do I help myself, train myself, practice or something to better recognize the way that he is? Because he is like, I just, I believe that I'm with you on that hundred um, percent. So tell us in just kind of in your own description, how would you define a sign from God? What does that mean from you? I like my starting point to be the Bible. Really, I find that throughout scripture, God is inviting people to 
to connect with him. And he uses a variety of methods based on who we are and how he knows he made us um, to, to draw our attention to himself, really a sign in everyday life, um, like a sign, like a stop sign it tells you mm -hmm. what to do, a street sign, it tells you where you are. And I find that God's signs really, um, they're assurances and they're indicators that we're seen by him, we're known by him, we're loved by him. They're pointers, they direct us to him, you know, we don't bow down and worship a sign because it's telling us to stop and we're tired and it's a stop sign. We just know what to do now because we've seen the sign and it, and it keeps us um, focused and it keeps us moving forward. Mm. I, I've broken the book into four weeks, four weeks of readings. I mean, really the book is a devotional. You can use it easily as a devotional. So it's broken into four weeks. In the first week we talk about signs from God that are items, things that God will point out to us. Uh, the second week talks about how God uses people as signs in our life to direct us to him, to keep us on this path, to remind us who we are in him, you know. Um, the third week talks about symbols, numbers, uh, a word that, you know, you just keep getting in your head, um, something that you just notice everywhere you go. Like, you know, I, in my book, I talk about a season where there, I saw hearts everywhere and um, what God was saying to me through that. Um, it wasn't just a, oh yeah, I'm starting to notice a lot of hearts. Like it actually, God made sure I noticed that this was something he was saying to me specifically in a response to something I had asked him about. And then the fourth week, we talk about how events can actually be a sign in our life. A thing that happens that it's a pivot point in your life. We all have them. I mean, sometimes it's something as simple as a graduation or the birth of a baby or, um, but other times it's like, you know, I was in this place and suddenly this thought struck me and I just felt the sense of purpose or whatever. These are moments that God is speaking into. And that sounds kind of nebulous maybe, but when you've been seeking God and you've been asking him, God, show me this, I just need to know. And then you come across one of these moments, like I believe because you've been seeking, because you want to know, he's so drawn to our thirst. You know, Jesus said the thirsty will be filled and satisfied. And there's something about our thirst for what God is saying, even if it's because we're desperate. I mean, even more so we're desperate. We want to hear from him. He wants us to hear. He's like, okay, I can speak into that. Mm -hmm do I ever have something to give you? Wow. You're going to love what I have for you. And so they're literally like signposts. Um, the old Testament, sometimes we'll call them an Ebenezer. They would actually mm -hmm. take a bunch of stones and pile them up. Sometimes it was just one person. Uh, sometimes it looked like an altar where they began to worship because they'd met with God. Sometimes the instruction was that everyone should bring a stone to that place. And then when their children would ask, they would say, see, this is where the Lord met us. It's a term we don't use a whole lot anymore. I think it's in a few hymns about an Ebenezer found, place. Here I raise mine Ebenezer and come now found. That's yes, one of my favorite that. hymns. Yeah, I yeah. love that. And a lot of times you sing that. I do uh, when I have led that hymn before. A lot of times I've paused because we sing that. And we think like it's a name or something, maybe if we don't know, but you know, to, yeah, to bring that symbolism and it's like here, actually I'm celebrating, I'm raising the, the yeah. tangible proof that God is interested in me and my life and what that means to me to be, as you said, seen by him. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's a, yeah. here and I celebrate it here. I raise it here. I declare it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Feel like it's a way that God connects what's very real and very natural in our world to his very real and very supernatural world. He just plugs us in, in that moment where our natural suddenly is, 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 is connected firmly yeah. to his supernatural. And we can lean into that because that's what he wants. Like that's why Jesus came. He came to intersect our natural with the whole realm of supernatural that is just above and beyond. So his signs are taking a kernel of his eternal truth and saying, okay, so you're noticing now, let me expand it. And mm -hmm. I find that as I see that uh, a sign I've noticed and that you've probably noticed too, I, I see that each time that comes to my awareness, 
God just adds another layer onto that truth. He brings another texture to it. He brings another context to it where I suddenly realize that his grace is sufficient for me. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Like that's such a great scripture and we all know it, but it takes on a whole new breath when we're walking through something that's really painful. Yeah. And we realize that again, oh, this is what it looks like to walk through with strength made perfect in weakness. So the signs just pull us in Mm -hmm. deeper. These moments. Wow. It's a baseline message that he's expanding bit by bit. If you believe that they're always available to us or often available or God's using them in our lives consistently, what have you found or what do you think are some of the reasons we don't receive them or we don't notice them, don't see them, however you'd say that? What what keeps us from being in touch with that? I think it's a common human thing that we would disqualify ourselves. God is holy. (laughs) And maybe I'm not so holy. Why would he want to connect with someone so unholy? Yeah. Sometimes it's about like being willing to lean into the uncomfortable a little bit. Don't you think like, mm-hmm. because uh, in, in my years as being a pastor, I can't tell you how many times people have said something along the lines of, I wish I could just have a burning bush experience with Moses, like, to, like Moses talking about a sign, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. I, and but sometimes I want to be like, no, you don't actually really wish that, but the, <laughs> Because it he was, I know exactly, <laughs> but I think about that example and listening to you talk because really, uh, it, the the unusual thing in that in that story was not that there was a bush on fire, right? Because that was like a normal thing in Moses's life. Really, yeah. the unusual thing was yeah. that it wasn't consumed. I mean, it would be unusual in my life if I saw a bush on bush on fire, but I don't have the job and the location and stuff where Moses did. And I'm like, I think sometimes you tell me what you think about this. I think sometimes we think we have to have a sign the way that it was like in one of these Bible stories that we know so well, but actually Mm -hmm. I think the sign makes us ask the questions that Moses asked, who are you? Who am I? I don't know if I can do this. Like if that's kind of the things that are happening in, in us, sometimes I'm like, Oh, maybe that's your sign. And it's not a burning bush, but it's just something that stirs up the same kinds of things. And then our, our decision is, do we listen to him answer us by saying, I'll be with you. Right. Or do we just run from it or push it because we're like, Oh, I don't like how that makes me feel. You know, it also makes me think of like, sometimes, um, we don't even notice that it's actually a sign Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're, disqualifying ourselves from like, well, I could never receive a sign, but really uh, you've received many signs and you've been okay with it because that's how loving God is. Like he's really natural at speaking to us. Like, like at the beginning of the book, I write a story about how um, I recount how my family was on holidays and uh, we were unpacking our suitcases. And I looked, I loved maps as a kid. Like I just really had a thing for maps. Ooh, I'm here and I'm going to be there. And you know, all this. So we were unpacking our suitcases. And of course I was standing looking at the back of the hotel room door. Like they always have a map on the back of the door. You are here. (laughs) I was like, Oh, I'm on the red dot. You know, I'm like here in room 302 or, you know, whatever. And, you know, I noticed where the fire exits were and, you know, all that. And, you know, like, of course I'm a kid, I'm like 10 probably. So I'm imagining, what would it be like to walk through there? And, you know, I'm kind of thinking in my head, Ooh, a fire alarm, like, what would that be like? And so I'm standing in front of this map, starting to think these things, right? So little did I know later on that first night when we were in the hotel, the fire alarms went off. Something in me was a little bit more settled than it could have been because I had seen the map. I knew the route and I knew I had a general idea of the way through. I mean, it was specific because it was a map, but you never really know until you're walking, Mm -hmm. right? I was becoming sensitized to what the map offered me before I had a real need for the map. Mm. Uh, When the moment came and there was panic happening, I already had a sense of where this thing was going. That door I should probably be looking for. Um, You know, I say here, it reminds me of looking at the fire exit map on the back of the hotel door, I began to build familiarity with the signs before beginning my real-time search. In fact, before I even knew I needed to look for the sign, I was becoming aware. And this is how God speaks to us. Like, this is how, when we're pulling into him and we're like, you know, Lord, just 
speak to me. I want to hear, you know, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what it sounds like, but he finds moments like this. And years later, I look back and I realize, yeah, this is how God talks to us. And you might say, well, that's a real stretch, you know, to like say, well, that was a sign from God. But I, I, I don't think it's a stretch because it has pointed me to God so many times. How could it not be a sign? Signs point us. They guide us. And I think also they can remind us because sometimes yes. the, the sign from God, for me, a lot of times the sign from God is, I, be, I also believe I see them in nature, in my life around me, tangible mm -hmm. things. But sometimes the sign is a deep understanding of his presence with me when I'm seeking him or searching him like an answer, like a presence, like a, I, I can't really describe it, but he, he, he offers me what I just call these like intimate holy moments with him where I feel his direction. Right. And then I can go back to that moment when I get scared or confused or lonely mm -hmm. or yeah. discouraged or whatever. I can go back to that and remember in that place in that burning bush experience, if you will, or whatever, when I asked the questions, who are you and who am I? And those questions, he answered that with an, I am with you. And so when the path gets a little bit more challenging to continue on, I have that, which I, for me, I would put that as a sign, right? I have that absolutely just tangible yeah. memory of, oh yes, I remember that he guided me this direction. And I remember he promised to be with me. And so I'll just need to take the next step until he, until he leads me differently. Right. Yeah. And they're powerful. Yeah. So while it's a map on the back of a door that may be, yeah, I, yes, some people would disregard that, but if it does something inside you, if it reminds you of his presence, his guidance, then it's, it is, it is for you. Exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is God yeah. speaking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've found that, you know, for he, like the air, the big areas of life where we are really like where the rubber hits the road in like a real way, like mm -hmm. I need healing. Mm -hmm. I need direction. Like I need something to change. You know, this is the healing, the direction and the transformation. Those are areas where I know I've cried out to God to hear. And just like the familiarization with like, you know, the, the fire exit map, you know, like that's, it's, it's, it's a really easy um, example to get our heads into. Um, but God wants to lead us into real specific, real niche areas. He's intentional. For you, it, you know, a, a clear memory is this map on the back of a hotel door, right? For me, it's more mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm kind of at the end of my rope for lack of a better way to say that. And I'm like, in the floor of my closet, like just, you know, whatever. And I feel him so real to me and it fills me with a sense of renewal. Um, I've had mm -hmm. tangible things also in my life, but that's what, when, as I listen to you talk, I'm like, that's what, that's the time when I consistently feel that with him. And I think for me, one of the things, an obstacle to that is making space for it. And so yeah. there are times when I just keep going in my own strength or try to keep going in my own strength. And, um, I struggle to have the energy or the enthusiasm or certainly the joy, right. When he's continuing to offer me ways to refill that, but I just keep walking on and missing it. And there, and this, yeah. the signs, I think this is what I keep thinking of as you're talking. Sometimes the signs are the things that move us forward. I can't go with you and stay mm -hmm. where I am. So you call me through these things. And, I, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, like you said, we can, we can step out in that. And then if it doesn't uh, quantify quickly enough, we think we've made an error, right? And the reality mm -hmm. is, as we mature with him, we have to be better at understanding. Um, it's the, the thing that doesn't go well is a part of the reason why he moved us in this direction, because there's there's refining that needs to go on. Yeah. There's, um, yeah. there's a, a chance to learn more about him in that place of struggle. And so I, mm -hmm. I have always, we take a step out in obedience, follow a sign, if you will, or something. And then it's so tempting to shrink back the first time that it doesn't go exactly how we hoped it would go. And we think that we've made an error or I shouldn't have trusted the sign or whatever. And the reality is if we can lean into that discomfort, he actually has us right where he wants us, I think. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no. so totally. So, oh, tell me a little bit about what, what are some things you learned about yourself? I know you get a leading from God to, in a direction for a book like this, right? Mm-hmm. And then as you begin to organize it, assimilate stories from your own life, all of that kind of good stuff. I think you probably learn and see him in even a different way. Would you be willing to share us just well, share with us just some things maybe, or a thing or two that you experienced as you were organizing and, and putting together this project uh, in a way that you learned or grew? First of all, like right off the top, I'd say I am the kind of gal who would like to sort of know what it all looks like before I jump in. And this book writing process was not that way at all. (laughs) Um, Yes. I felt like from the start, I felt like I'm the kind of person who needs God to sort of sneak up on me sometimes and say, here's a word of life for you. Here's, here's a breath. Here's um, some fresh air. And, and so um, I started writing out um, stories like I just started making a list of places, benchmark um, moments, um, events uh, where I had truly felt I had met with God and I didn't write them in any careful order. I just started writing them down. And then I started writing a scripture down that came to mind mm. as I recalled that story. And so that's really how the writing process began for me. And then I began to see that actually God speaks to me through things like, like this little inkwell that um, was my great, great grandfather's. He used it in school Hmm. um, in like 1910, you know, Um, received it from my grandpa uh, a couple of days after I had prayed for God to restore things that the enemy had tried to steal in my life, things like inheritance, things like health, things like well-being. And I had been praying with some friends. I never imagined that within a day or two, I would receive this thing as a tangible, it's only little, Mm -hmm. but it reminded me that God is really keen on giving us what's in his heart to give us, our inheritance, our health, his dreams for us. And as the years have gone by, this thing has sat on my desk and it has reminded me and and the call in my heart has been growing to write. And I realize that God has used this little item really and truly as a sign. And this sign is growing. It didn't start off as a booming voice from heaven. You're going to write books. You're going to write books about things that are hard on your heart. He grew me. He's grown me for like 10 years until what this sign was indicating is actually something I can grapple with and deal with and write about. And so, you know, what did I learn about myself in this journey? I've learned that I'm way more about process than I thought I was. I thought I was ducks in a row, check marks on a list, get your planning done and it'll all work out well. Can we get to, can, can it be about that? Because I would be so much happier some days if it could just be about that. (laughs) <laughs> it's too messy you know for I'm me. <laughs> oh, I know. Totally. Right. And one of the things I'm thinking is, hello, that's actually not how God operates. <laughs> and I want my to be <laughs> like, you know, when he created, he yeah. created the earth and his spirit hovered over the face of the deep. We don't know for how long, but <clears throat> he didn't say he had his checkbox mm. and he had all those ticks in a row. And then he spoke the word. We don't know what he was doing while he was hovering Mm -hmm. creatively in that space. But there was a process because I don't think God would be leading us through the lives we lead. If it wasn't necessary for us to have instant results and to be able to see everything before it unfolds. Like, I think God would give that to us if that was really what was best for us. But I really think the process and the journey, like if I flipped into the healthy new me that I wish I could be, I don't think I could keep up with myself. Mm. I would bite off more than I could chew. I would forget who I was. I would forget all the lessons that I've learned along the way. And I think process just integrates every layer of truth that God wants me to hold on to and retain. I think he gives it to me in bite-sized pieces, just like how this little sign has grown heart's desires. And yet this dream can come to pass. Yeah. He's speaking to us like he's a God of process for good reason, because good things happen 
in this really imperfect process, yeah. he's okay with it. Yeah. And I'm learning to be okay too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I'm learning I, some days better than others. Amen. Yeah. So I, I, before I close, I always like to ask this question and that is what are you right now reading or listening to a song that you're particularly drawn to a podcast, a book, a study, anything right now at all, a devotional, anything that's just kind of something you're like, I'm using this right now and I like it. And it's keeping me my heart tender towards the Lord. Anything like that in your life right now? Um, I just finished a book. It's called Beholding and Becoming. It's a really lovely um, book where she's done her own watercolor art, but she's also talking about beholding. What we look at is what we become when we Mm. look at Jesus in our life and in our spaces. Um, Slowly, he's molding us into, he's conforming us into the image of Christ. I mean, that's really what we want, you know? So I just finished that and I would highly recommend it. It's so good. I also have to say, I I'm always reading through the Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, <laughs> it, keeps me, it keeps me childlike. It keeps me looking for him in new and unusual ways. And it's just fun. Jennifer's book is signs from God, discovering messages in everyday life for healing direction and transformation. You can buy that on Amazon. I love the book. I love the concept of the book and I have loved talking with you today and learning more about it. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing some of your time with us. Um, We're going to sign off now and thank you for listening, everyone. And until next time, peace. Jennifer places signs from God in four categories, items, people, symbols and numbers, and events. I know I've experienced God in each of those categories. I encourage you today to be on the lookout for where God is showing up in your life through everyday moments too. Thank you for listening. I pray that wherever your day takes you, you're walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.